Hi guys and welcome to October's vlog style wrap up. Today is the 19th and all of my footage for my wrap ups uh, was deleted so I'm starting over with full vlog footage and I'm sorry if some of my thoughts for these books are not as current or well thought out as my normal wrap ups are but it's been a month guys. I was having a lot of computer issues, like a lot of computer issues, to the point where I was getting like notifications all the time that computer was full and I had no storage space and I was deleting everything and I was moving everything to an external hard drive and I thought I was doing everything right. I thought I was doing everything to clean up and apparently I was not. So I went on a binge where I was just getting rid of stuff off of my computer, trying to free up space. I couldn't upload any of my video footage from my phone or from my camera to the computer. And I couldn't edit my videos. I couldn't do anything. Long story short, I had to go into iMovie and delete all of my raw footage, all of my finished projects, like every video, every clip, every everything. I had to re-download my stock footage and stock videos for like my intro and my end cards. But I had to clean iMovie out completely entirely and it freed up 880 gigabytes of memory on like a 990 gigabyte computer. It was insane how much iMovie was storing. It had like cached and different versions of my videos and even if I deleted my projects or deleted my raw footage it was still storing it. I've been on booktube for two years and have my beauty channel and it was a lot of stuff on there and I get it. It caused an issue where I lost my book that I wrote so like 107,000 words were pretty much gone. It reverted back to a really really old version of my book where I hadn't finished it yet. I hadn't edited the documents at all so I had to go back in from a pdf and my paper that I printed out like my printed version and it's taken me days to get my file back because I do need to go back in and do more computer edits and add stuff in so clearly I need my book to be in my computer so it has been struggle bus city but I think I have everything back to where it should be now so we're just going to jump into this wrap up but again I apologize because I might not have the books anymore and I might not have like as clear of thoughts and I apologize. You guys know I like to do these as soon as I read the book so that everything's like really current but this month it just wasn't an option. So this month I started off with Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This was an arc that I was able to get through NetGalley and I ended up hating it so much that I DNF'd it at 20%. I was reading this with Mel from Mel to the Any, and she DNF'd I think at like 20 or 22% as well. It was so disappointing. Like it, I was really really let down by it and I know that not all of her work is going to be The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. I know that this is a different kind of feel to the book, but this was supposed to be about Daisy Jones and the Six and this band and this rock and roll lifestyle, and it ended up being so horrific. It was told in like almost an interview style, but there's a solid dozen characters and everybody gets a paragraph, her character. So it just jumps from one to the next. You don't get to know anybody. Like it's so convoluted. Daisy Jones was not in that first 20%. She was the starting paragraph, like the starting paragraph and or section. And then you don't really hear anything else about her and you follow the six, like the other part of the band and their journey before teaming up with her. Like when I stopped, they hadn't even joined up yet. And it's basically just drugs and alcohol abuse and cheating on spouses. And I didn't like any of the characters. I was really disappointed by the storytelling and I could not get through it. So I DNF'd it. And then I read another arc, which was Rain and Delilah's Midnight Matinee by Jeff Sentner. This was one that I read as like a traveling arc. So this went on to other booktubers and then it'll go back to Jeff. I'll annotate it with our thoughts. And that one I gave four stars. It was not my favorite by him. It was supposed to be kind of like the opposite of his regular books, like more lighthearted with moments of darkness. But it was pretty freaking dark. What the hell were their names? I think Josie and Delia. And I ended up hating, hating Josie, I think it was her name. Um, I really liked Lawson, who was her love interest. He was amazing. 
I can't wait for you guys to read this purely because he is phenomenal. Like, he is the best book boyfriend. He's so cute. He's so great. He does, like, MMA, but he's also, like, not afraid to cry. He was pretty awesome. And they host this midnight show, public service, you know, channels, and they watch really old like horror flicks like really really cheesy horror flicks and do this little show but having one of the main characters whose pov that you get just be so wholly unlikable like i hate it a whole half of the povs except for the parts where she was with her love interest who was amazing it ended up being cute and i loved delia's relationship with her mother i really liked delia's storyline then i read the novella lost the lost sisters by holly black this is a combining novella between the cruel prince and the wicked king it's told in a letter for format from Taryn to Jude. Again, I think because I've already read The Wicked King, it was neat to see things from her point of view. I still don't like her. And now I just have to wait even longer before I have anything new from this series. But it is really, really nice for those people that did not get the honor to read The Wicked King to be able to have something to hold them over until that comes out. So I thought that was really, really cool. After The Lost Sisters, I read Vicious by V.E. Schwab, which I had not read yet. This is my first reading. I did tab and annotate it. And I love loved it. I love the anti-hero Victor and Eli and Sydney and Mitch, Eli and Victor, and they realize that near-death experiences along with a couple other components can create you waking up with extraordinary powers, and so they set forth to try to concoct their own near-death experiences to come back with these extraordinary powers, and it's kind of an exploration of what that means and what that looks like and how that changes people and morality. It was amazing. And I don't know how I hadn't read it earlier, but I really truly enjoyed it. And I'm not wholly surprised. I do really like the Monsters of Verity series. The Shades of Magic series I read in audiobook, but I have the physicals up there. Um, so yeah, I really, really liked it, and I'm excited to read Vengeful. Have not yet, though. And then I read Anna Dressed in Blood by Kendara Blake, or Kendara Blake, and I did not like it at all. I two-starred that, and I uh, did keep it because it was a traveling book, so it's all annotated by everybody else. Like a campy, supernatural almost kind of a vibe, and I think they did make a supernatural episode based off of it. The worst storyline. The characters didn't make any sense. To me, personally, it was just, it, it was really boring. It was really dull. Should have been action-packed. There should have been stuff going on. Um, the parts that should have been scary weren't scary. The, like, villain Anna herself, like, it just, it didn't work for me. I thoroughly, thoroughly did not enjoy it. So that was a bummer, but it did mean that I was able to take Girl of Nightmares, which was the second book of that series, I don't know if it's a duology. I don't know what it is. Um, but I had already bought that. And I I just put it right in my unhaul pile. I'm not going to be reading that. So that's done. Then I read Saga Volume 9 by Brian K. Vaughn and Fiona Staples. It was a Hoopla read. Hoopla is, for those of you that ask when I put up these videos, Hoopla is a library linked app. So if you have a library that subscribes to Hoopla, then everybody who has Hoopla has the same library to pull from. Now, Overdrive is library branch specific, so whatever your library has purchased, you can have in ebook or audiobook format, but for Hoopla, it's universal, so you get a certain amount of downloads, whatever your library has bought or agreed upon. I get five. I think Chelsea from Chelsea Darling Reads gets like 15. I wish I did, but I got it there. They're really good for having graphic novels like on release day. I got that five star, obviously. I love this series. And I do think we're halfway through it now. I think they agreed and said there was going to be like 18 volumes. And this is volume nine. And it was fantastic. I will say if you're reading Saga or interested in Saga, I would say get to these first nine as soon as possible. Because like, I don't want spoilers coming out and everything like that but there's been some emotional times like it's the first graphic novel that full-on made me cry like I think that was volume seven full-on made me cry this one did as well um so it's definitely stakes are amping up and things are really getting pretty serious this one is about uh, Marco and Alana and their daughter Hazel Marco and Alana are from warring planets and they are not allowed to be together so they're hunt they're being hunted by both of I think their planets um because their daughter should not be allowed to exist. And uh, they're hiding her. They're, they're on the run. 
Then I read Mudvayne by Taryn Fisher, which I have already moved over to my other shelf. This one I read on ebook, even though I have the physical book, and I two starred this one. This is my second Taryn Fisher, and unfortunately, I just don't think that she's for me. I don't enjoy her writing style. We follow a main character who wakes up in this cabin in the woods and she has provisions and stuff. She's going to be there for a while, supposedly. The Her captor is not there with her, but there is somebody else in the cabin with her. And we've got to discover their past and why they're there and what they're trying to work through. And it was really weird. I felt like reveals that came through between her and this other person and their relationship and their past and a trauma that occurred with her. Um, reveals came at odd ways and I didn't think that they needed to be like a big reveal. And I really, I did not like the relationship that was in this book. It was incredibly one-sided, incredibly unhealthy. And while I do think that sometimes there's an imbalance in relationships and one person's there more for the other, there needs to still be at some point a giving and there never was in this one. And that really bothered me that it was like romanticized how unhealthy it was. Plus the love interest very invested from the beginning in a way that was like just really unbelievable for me personally. And then I also felt like it really put a bad spin on seeking help for mental health. Um, and again, like, I'm not going to go into it because I don't want to spoil any of the plot if you want to read it. And it's hard to talk about it without spoiling it. But I just, I didn't think it was a healthy relationship. I didn't like the view on seeking mental health help. And I, it was not for me. I don't think I'm going to continue. And I do have Bad Mommy and Atheists Who Kneel and Pray on my nook as well. And I just don't think I want to read anything else by her. I, I'm not, I'm not enjoying her work. And then I read Into the Drowning Deep by Myra Grant, which I've also put back here I think on my favorite shelf it's down there um and that was phenomenal that was a five-star read this one is follows a ship that goes out to research whether or not an expedition that went horribly wrong seven years ago where all hands were lost the ship was recovered empty but bloody with this weird footage that claimed to potentially have found mermaids so they go out seven years after the fact to either like validify what these footage what this footage has shown and they go out with a team of scientists and camera crews and a ship's crew and everything to go and figure out what happened out there. Um, are there mermaids? Are they friendly? It was really, really eerie. It was really creepy. I made it through the whole book without having like nightmares. And then after I was done the book, I had a nightmare with where Alexander Skarsgård turned into like this vicious thing and just ate, ate someone. Um, and I was conflicted sexually because he's a very sexy man. And uh, he started eating her from a place where you wouldn't usually mind. And then his jaws unhinged and he ate, ate her, ate her. It was bad. Um, anyway, enough about my weird dreams. It was really cool. I think if you like sci-fi, if you like really science-driven books, this would be a really cool one. If you like that suspense, like that eerie anxiety, like ramping up of craziness, this is a good one. I thought it was great. I did read the prequel novella at the end of September and I do think that helped me get through this one but it did also spoil one of like the plot points at the end. So like the whole time I'm like annotating it and writing it and I'm like don't forget this. Don't forget this. And the character is even saying like I feel like we're missing something obvious and I'm like you are. It's this like the whole way but it was just like amped up my own anxiety even more so it actually kind of worked I guess. So there's that. And then the last thing that I read was actually Her Halloween Treat, and that was by Tiffany Rice. Reese. Um, Into the Drowning Deep was also Myra Grant, which is also Shauna McGuire. Her books are back there. Anyway, um, so Her Halloween Treat was a really quick read. It was a three-star read. Um, Into the Drowning Deep was a five-star read. Did I say that? I'm a hot mess, guys. Um, yeah, it was a good sexy time book. It was quick. It was a really fast read. There was a lot of sex. It was sex heavy, which I'm fine with. And it was fun. It was also kind of diverse. Uh, she had a gay brother who was getting married on her birthday, which was also Halloween, hence the Halloween treat. And uh, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I was about that book. It was fun. I'm excited to talk about that one in the live show, which will have already happened by the time you see this. If you're interested in like a super sexy time book, maybe give her Halloween treat a, a, a ride, a read.
it was a good one. So that is everything so far that I've read this month. I am currently in the middle of reading Strange Grace and also rereading The Wicked Deep. They're both rereads of Strange Grace by Tessa Grattan and The Wicked Deep by Shay Earnshaw. And I am reading, rereading and annotating both of those again. So that's exciting. And then I'm going to get into the rest of my Halloween reads. We'll see how the rest of the month goes. But now I've got this footage again. So again, I'm sorry if my thoughts were all over the place or if these weren't like the most well thought out reviews. But again, this is like, I'm filming this way after I've read all of these things. So that is it for now. And I'll check in next time. Bye guys. I finished One Dark Throne by Kandara Blake. And I really liked it. I actually have this physical copy, obviously, but I listened to the audiobook, and the audiobook was really well done. I enjoyed it a whole bunch. I don't really want to say anything about it because it's the second book of a series, but I will be continuing with the series, although not in any rush. It's one that I enjoy when I get to it. It is dark. It is kind of violent, um, but it's still moving at like a little bit of a slower pace than I was hoping for, and I'm totally going to want to know how the series ends, but I'm not like in any particular rush to buy it and figure that out. So that was my last read that I read prior to the Witchathon starting, and then for my beginning of the Witchathon, I read The Prince and the Dressmaker by Jen Wang, and this was gorgeous. This is by one of the co-writers and illustrators of In Real Life, which I really liked. That was another great graphic novel. And this one was so sweet. It's about a prince who enjoys wearing dresses, and he's been dressing up at night in secret, and he enlists the help of Francis, who is a dressmaker, to help design all of his dresses and live this other life um, where he just feels like really complete. I loved the art style and it is so sweet. Gave One Dark Throne, I think, four stars. The Prince and the Dressmaker will get five. And um, we'll see where the rest of my Witchathon reading goes from here. Oh, hello! It is um, Halloween night at nine o'clock at night and I am not gonna be reading anything else. So I'm gonna update you guys on my Witchathon and the end of my wrap up for October, close this bad boy out so I can edit it and have it ready for next week. For Witchathon, The Prince and the Dressmaker. Really enjoyed it, five stars. I finished A Great and Terrible Beauty by Libba Bray, which I gave two stars to? One star? Maybe one star. I think I one starred it. It was written in 2003, but like set way back in like a more Victorian kind of a time frame. And it just had so many problematic things. There was like fat shaming, slut shaming. There was so many discussions that could have been really powerful that weren't ever really made powerful. Um, discussions about addiction, discussions about self-harm, and none of them actually went anywhere. So it was a little bit of a bummer. I just it wasn't for me. It was spooky. The audiobook was really terrifying, and I actually was a tra traveling book, so I'm keeping it regardless, but um, not my favorite pacing plot. The Diviner series, amazing, but um, A Great and Terrible Beauty, not so fantastic. And then I also finished Slasher, Gr Slasher Girls and Monster Boys, which is an anthology. I think I ended up giving it four stars. A lot of them were really good. Some of them were like, meh, okay, I need to update my Goodreads review so that I can like talk about each of the stories. I have not done that yet. By the time this goes up, I will have. So I'll link my review for that down below if you're interested in my thoughts on each story and my star rating for each story. But overall, really enjoyable. None of them like terrified me. Some were definitely creepy though. I did start The Girl Who Drank the Moon. I will finish it, but I have not yet. I got like 7% of the way into my Plain Jane. I will probably finish that at some point, but who knows when. Overall for the month, I think I read 14 books. I will insert the stats here. Overall, a really good month. I had some five-star books. I had Vicious, which was five-star. Into the Drowning Deep, which was five-star. The Lost Sisters, which was the novella by Holly Black, which was five-star and Saga Volume 9 was five star. Prince and the Dressmaker was five star. I had some really good ones. I'm excited for November. I'm nervous about November. And as per my uh, creativity in booktube discussion chat, if you have not watched that, I will link that up above. Um, per that video, I will be focusing a lot more on writing and I don't know how that's going to affect my reading, but I will keep you guys posted. Thank you so much for watching and being interested in what I read for October. Not a bad reading month for me, like not my best, not my worst by any means. I hope you guys had a fantastic October. That's everything. If you like this video, go ahead and give me a big thumbs up, click subscribe, and I will see all of you in my next video. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.